Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to our little session here. Um, I'm going to start sharing my screen with you so I can get started on the lesson. Perfect. Okay, so today we are going to be talking about neural communications. Super important, super interesting, actually one of my favorite topics um, to learn about. Um, still learning more about it. Um, and let's, uh, I'll tell you a little something about myself or a few things. My name is Joseph Horowitz. I am studying biology and neuroscience at CUNY Queens College, and I hope one day to become a doctor. So I'm on the pre-med track at Queens. Um, so when I'm not in school, I love to volunteer in my community, uh, and I do that as an EMT. I ride on ambulances a couple times a week, um, emergency ambulances. It is very, very enjoyable, and it's uh, very fulfilling. So today I'll be teaching you about your nerves, your neurons, um, and how they communicate with each other. So our agenda today will be learning about neural communication and then a quick activity just to refresh and make sure that we have everything down. Um, so let's start with the basics of signal transmission along a neuron. Okay, so right here is a diagram of your neuron, um, which is a kind of cell. Um, and it is the active, it's the, um, active unit in the um in your nervous system um so this is what is doing a lot of the work in your nervous system is your neuron so let's take a look over here we have our cell body so whatever it is that you may have already learned about cells um will likely be found in the, found in the cell body so you'll have your mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, you'll have ribosomes, um, and you'll actually have, you'll see here in green, the nucleus, uh, which contains the DNA. So this cell, the cell body is going to control all the, and, and regulate all the functions of the neuron. It just, it keeps it uh, and maintains it as a neuron. You know, it produces all the energy it needs um, and contains all the DNA for it. Um, and so I'd say the most important piece um, with regard to what we're talking about today is your axon. Um, and for now, we're going to ignore the myelin sheath and the, and the Schwann cell and the and node of Ranvier because that is a little more in depth. But let's take a look at the axon. You see, it's just a long line, basically, with those yellow, yellow and orange things on top of it. Um, so that axon is really where uh, we're going to talk about how a signal is sent, but that's how, that's where the signal is gonna be sent. It's gonna be sent uh, along the axon. Um, and so you'll see at the end, you'll see an axon terminal, that's where the axon ends. And then all the way to the left, you'll see a dendrite. And if we have, if we put another uh, neuron right next to it at the axon terminal, the axon terminal would connect to the dendrite of the next neuron. So, yeah. So, you know, you won't just have one neuron by itself, you'll have multiple connected to each other, okay? And so they, you'll be able to send a signal down the axon to the axon terminal and to the dendrite of the next neuron. The, ne the dendrite is gonna pick up the signal and allow it to continue with that next nerve. Um, so let's talk about the action potential, what, it, what exactly it is. So this is really what the signal is. So when your neuron is activated by a stimulus, that's anything in the environment. So a ray of light, could be a stimulus. You know, my eye detects that there is a, sti uh, a, a stimulus, which is the ray of light. Or if I hear a sound, um, this triggers an action potential in your neurons. So stimuli are detected by sensory neurons, which are called afferent, a uh, afferent neurons. Um, like, uh, let's say your skin has sensory receptors inside. Your skin can feel when something is touching it. Uh, and your body moves, you know, your, your neurons are told, your neurons tell parts of your body to move using motor neurons, efferent neurons. So these two types of neurons are connected by interneurons. But, you know, what you'll have is you'll see that a stimulus like light, like I said, will come into through a sensory neuron in my eyes and I'll, I'll perceive it. I'll see the light coming in and then I can tell my legs to take me outside using motor neurons. Um, so at rest, the inside of a neuron, and this is what's, what's very important um, in how an action potential is sent down, right? So the action potential, I'll say again, is, is the actual signal. That's the form that a signal is being sent um, down. I told you about the axon. So when you're sending a signal down an axon, that is in the form of an action potential. 
So at rest, the inside of a neuron is negative, the interior, and the outside is positive. But during an action potential, when your neuron is stimulated, the charges switch. So that triggers a chain reaction that sends the signal down the axon. And so you can see it here in this diagram. Uh, on the top picture, you see the little arrow moving uh, all the way on the left, a small black arrow. Um, and then you'll see in the second picture, a white arrow. And if you look very closely, you can see that there are these little blue negatives on the inside of the cell and these little orange positives on the outside. But if you look at the second picture, you'll see that the first four of the negatives are switched to the outside and positives are switched to the inside. Now, of course, that's not, um, you know, that's just a representation of what's happening, but those are switching. Um, the charges are switching from the inside to the outside and the outside to the inside. So that's how this is sent down the axon. Now, when the action potential arrives at the end of an axon, it causes the neuron to empty out these little chemicals called neurotransmitters. And so those are going to be doing a lot of the work, right? So you have, you have the electrical charges switching, and that's, elect, uh, that's electric um, signaling. And then you're going to move into chemical signaling. So neurotransmitters are little chemicals. Um, and eventually you'll move back to uh, dealing with charges. So these neurotransmitters that are, these neurotransmitters that are, um, that are sent out of the neuron end up in a small space between the neuron and the next neuron in line. So this space is called the synapse. So if you think, if you, if you say that you have one neuron by itself, all right, and the, and the action potential goes all the way down the axon and arrives at the axon terminal. When it gets to the axon terminal, it, causes these little neurotransmitters to be released um, into a little space right after the neuron and right before the next neuron, right? So they're not actually physically touching. Between one neuron and the next, there's a little space in between. That's called the synapse. Um, and that is where the neurotransmitter is released. I'll go through that again in case that wasn't clear enough. Um, and so we'll go through this next piece as well. Neurotransmitters that don't bind to the postsynaptic neuron are taken up back into the cell, which is called reuptake. So I'll, I'll give a little diagram for this. So if you see the nerve impulse is heading down towards the very end. So this little piece on the left, um, right? It, it says uh, presynaptic neuron, right? So that's labeled the presynaptic. And then also there's a postsynaptic neuron on the right. So the left is the presynaptic neuron and the right is the postsynaptic neuron. Presynaptic means it's just before the synapse and postsynaptic means it's after the synapse. Um, and again, the synapse is a little space in there. Feel free to pause it after I speak and take a look and familiarize yourself with it because this is a very important, very important diagram here. Um, but if you take a look, you know, the nerve impulse has made it all the way to the end of the axon and you see these little these little circles really being emptied into the space between them. And those are your neurotransmitters. Um, so those little neurotransmitters will end up in the postsynaptic neuron binding to the receptors. So you'll see on the, on the very surface of the postsynaptic neuron, which again is the one to the right, that's right after the synapse, you'll see the neurotransmitter is binding to the receptors there, right? And there are a few different types. There are a bunch of different types really of neurotransmitters. Either they can signal to the next neuron to keep going, or they can signal to the neuron not to go anymore. So they can be inhibitory, which means it inhibits it, it tells it to stop, or it can be excitatory, and it tells it, or, and it, tells it con uh, to continue um, and to create another action potential to send to the next neuron or the next neuron or the next neuron. Um, so that is a really, that's really how it's done. So feel free to pause for a moment and take a look at that and familiarize yourself with it. Okay, so like I just mentioned, there are all types and shapes of neurotransmitter. So there are a whole bunch of different types. Um, for example, acetylcholine is one. They're all chemicals. Um, well, yeah, a lot of them are chemicals. That's all we'll talk about here is chemical, uh, chemical neurotransmitters. And each, each shape, uh, each neurotransmitter literally has a very specific shape that fits into very specific receptors on the postsynaptic neuron, so the one that's after the big space. Um, and so they receive the information, like I said, to either keep the uh, action potential going or to stop it. I'm sorry, to keep the signal going by firing another action potential or um, stopping the signal by not firing another action potential. Uh, and this is called the lock and key model. You'll see very literally the triangular one will fit in, um, but the circular one won't. 
So it's, it's quite literally a, a lock and key. So let's reflect quickly. Um, so what are the steps involved in sending a neuron in sending an action potential down the axon in a neuron? Um, so feel free to pause for a sec. Right. So first you receive the, the action potential at the initial, um, at the dendrite and it's sent down the axon to the axon terminal. Uh, and when it gets there, the neurotransmitters are emptied out into the synapse. Uh, the synapse is full of these neurotransmitters and the neurotransmitter can go to the postsynaptic neuron um, where it'll find receptors and it'll bind with it. Um, so how fast do you think an action potential can travel? Now think about it just for a second and see if you can try to give it a nice guess. Uh, I did a little research and found that an action potential can travel 580 miles an hour. So if a car is going on the highway, you know, 50 miles an hour, it is going 10 times faster than that car. It's pretty unbelievable. And I did a little more research for this one, but how many neurons do you think you have in your whole body? And this is going to be crazy because it's such a huge, absolutely crazy number. It is 86 billion. All right. So let's, um, we have more diagrams here. Um, and we're going to apply what we learned about neural communication in this, uh, in this map over here. So see if you can tell what's happening in each of these steps. And I'll go over it in just a minute. Feel free to pause. Okay. In number one, we see this is basically at rest, right? So not all of our neurons are constantly being stimulated and giving in, and given information or being told what to do right now. That's at rest. Number two, you see on top, you see a little arrow coming down. Um, <clears throat> you see the arrow coming down from the axon. Um, and that's really what's happening, right? The axon terminals are receiving the information from the axon. Um, in step number three over here, you'll see that since the action potential was sent to the axon terminal, um, it triggers this reaction that sends these neurotransmitters into the synapse, which is very important. Um, because, you know, that's going to either, that's going to signal for the, um, neuro, for the mechanism to continue or for it to stop, uh, depending on what the neurotransmitter is. Number four is where the neurotransmitters are actually binding to the receptors on the postsynaptic cell, right? And now we're back to the electrical stimulus. Apparently this was an excitatory a neurotransmitter that signaled for the communication to continue and to continue and to continue. So this neurotransmitter bound to the receptors on the postsynaptic uh, neuron on the dendrite of the next neuron over. Um, and it signaled for another electrical stimulus. You'll see a number five is this electrical stimulus with an arrow going to the right. That's what it's signaling for. And then I briefly touched on reuptake, which is that any neurotransmitter that's left over in the synapse will not just stay there. It'll be taken back up by the presynaptic neuron. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing just for a moment. And I'm going to take a look. Okay. So let's consolidate. Um, let's, let's, uh, Let's get a, just a few quick basic questions to make sure that we are on the exact same page. So the first question is, which part of the neuron carries the action potential? And that will be the axon, right? That's the physical piece of it that is carrying the action potential down. Um, so where do neurotransmitters do their work? Where do they, you know, where are they released? Um, and where do they bind to the receptors? That gives a bit of a hint. And that would be in the synapse. Um, so what kind of neuron, I know we only spoke about this just for a moment, but what kind of neuron will detect the stimulus that causes an action potential, right? So it's not a motor neuron. Uh, it's not an efferent neuron. It is a sensory neuron or an afferent neuron. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen just for another moment. All right, just so we can get this information to you. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. And here is our email and our webpage. And 
I'm going to stop screen sharing for a moment once again. All right. Much appreciated that you stuck with me, and I hope you enjoy the lesson. Here are just a few references to make sure that credit goes to where credit is due. Page one of the references. Feel free to pause and take a better look. And the last page. So I'll say again, thank you very much. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you enjoyed. Obviously, feel free to watch through again. Um, and if you have anything to say or contribute, feel free to contact Project Star. Take care.